Marcus Aurelius once said, If it is not right, do not do it. If it is not true, do not say it. In the world we live in, we see many people telling us about habits we should cultivate or how we should behave in front of others. The problem is that sometimes we shouldn't focus on what to do, but rather on what not to do. It's no use having some good habits if we continue to have destructive habits in our lives, which harm us and those around us. We must have the obligation to keep an eye on our actions with self-control and know how our attitudes affect us, because this idea of responding to everything at all times in real time is the formula for suffering and misery. When thoughts come into your head, notice what they're saying and analyze. Is this my brain trying to sabotage me? Is this an unproductive habit that only makes what I'm thinking worse? What's wrong with it? These may be questions we need to ask ourselves to know if we're doing the right thing or not. As Zeno said, well-being is achieved in a few steps, but that's no small feat. So if you eliminate these four toxic habits I'm going to talk about next, I'm sure you'll have a better life and you'll be a virtuous person more appreciated by your loved ones. Before I tell you about the first toxic habit, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any quality content that could change your life. After all, just the fact that you're watching videos like this already indicates that you're trying to be above average. One, two ears and one mouth for a reason. Zeno. Have you ever been in a place where everyone talks but no one listens to each other? Where you don't even want to listen to the other person, but just want to talk about yourself or what you think about the subject? This happens all the time, unfortunately. This is a simple phrase from Zeno, but it's full of meaning and makes us think about a habit we often fall into, talking more than listening. In a world full of the constant din of words, Zeno's wisdom highlights how important it is to cultivate silence and rediscover the art of listening. Nowadays, we live in a society where many voices compete for our attention. Social networks with notifications every minute, frantic political discussions, and the constant need to express opinions create an environment where words are often spoken without thinking about the consequences. Stoicism, as a way of life, suggests a more thoughtful approach. Zeno's metaphor, which compares the two ears to our ability to listen and the solitary mouth to our ability to speak, suggests that we should listen more than we speak. This stoic practice is like a solution to impulsive speaking, which can lead to misunderstandings, unnecessary conflicts and regrets later on. By adopting the habit of listening carefully before speaking, we create space for understanding and empathy, which are important pillars of Stoic wisdom. For the Stoic, silence is not just about not speaking, but is a conscious tool for cultivating inner tranquility. A mouth that talks constantly often reflects an agitated mind, unable to find rest. It talks all the time for fear of being judged by others. But by controlling the impulse to say everything we think, we discover a mental space to think and reflect on ourselves. Moderation in words is also in line with the Stoic principle of virtue. Words have the power to build or destroy, to elevate or debase. Stoicism invites us to think about whether our words are in accordance with virtue, whether they contribute to the common good, and whether they reflect a calm and wise mind. Intentional silence in this context becomes a conscious choice towards moral excellence. This excellence strengthens one of the greatest skills needed today, preventing us from saying something out of emotion. Imagine you're in a fight with your partner, and you accidentally say something that you know will hurt her feelings. Although it's sometimes possible to make amends, the damage has already been done. That's if the relationship doesn't end. Remember, even if you can glue a broken glass back together, the cracks in it show the damage done. That's why Zeno's phrase is important. Listening better also prevents us from speaking out of the emotion of the moment. In addition, the practice of listening more than speaking strengthens social bonds. Empathy, which stems from the ability to understand the experiences and perspectives of others, is cultivated by listening sincerely. Relationships are healthier and thrive when there is room for authentic expression and respectful listening. In the information age, the art of listening becomes a powerful antidote to overstimulation. The ability to distinguish the essential from the superfluous, to discern between wisdom and noise, is a valuable skill. The Stoics, with their emphasis on mental clarity, offer a valuable guide to finding balance in a world full of information. Zeno's maxim about two ears and one mouth is like an invitation to rethink our relationship with words. The Stoic practice of silence is not an invitation to be passive, 
but to seek wisdom, empathy, and moderation. By cultivating the art of listening more than speaking, we open the door to a more conscious, ethical, and meaningful life, in line with the stoic principles that span the ages. Two, don't complain too much even to yourself. Marcus Aurelius. Have you ever found yourself complaining? Have you ever complained about simple and even insignificant things? Perhaps this has happened more than it should. In a world marked by the incessant cacophony of complaints, Marcus Aurelius stands as a beacon of incredible wisdom. Don't complain too much, even to yourself, he advises, offering a compass for navigating the imposed storms of our minds. This phrase, subtle in its simplicity, unveils a destructive habit that many hastily cultivate, constant complaining. Following in the footsteps of Zeno and Seneca, Marcus Aurelius recommends moderation in complaining. The constant mania for complaining, whether directed at the outside world or echoing in the corridors of the inner mind, is a poison that hurts the fortress of the soul. Instead of dealing with challenges, we give in to complaining, compromising our ability to discern between what we can control and what is beyond our control. Stoic philosophy proposes a large number of teachings for dealing with the tide of problems, starting with the principle of acceptance. Acceptance, not in the passive sense, but as an active acceptance of the reality that unfolds before us. The moment we indulge in endless regrets, we forget that life by its very nature is ephemeral and unpredictable. The Stoics encourage us to become the creators of our own happiness, even in the most difficult circumstances. The practice of victimhood emerges as a driving force against the destructive impulse to complain. Instead of withering under the weight of life's problems, the Stoics challenge us to change our perspective, to find refuge in the serenity that is not easily disturbed by the vagaries of fate. By avoiding excessive complaining, Marcus Aurelius encourages us to explore the realm of introspection, where authenticity and self-reflection flourish. Continuous complaining often acts as a smokescreen, preventing us from seeing the light in front of us and thinking clearly. If we let go of this tendency to whine every time we have problems, we can find peace in our minds and see how to understand ourselves. Virtue, a fundamental pillar of Stoic philosophy, is linked to self-responsibility. When we lament, we place our responsibility on the external world, blaming the world or fate. However, the Stoics challenge us to embrace internal control, to forge the moral fortitude that overcomes the difficult changes that happen on the outside. By ceasing to complain, we become architects of our destiny, able to face challenges with dignity and inner strength. Our language, both internal and external, shapes our reality. The habit of complaining becomes a guide to an existence of negativity, scaring away everything good that the world can bring us. By adopting Stoic wisdom, we are influenced to change our way of thinking and turn complaints into opportunities for growth and learning. Complaining, when stripped of its influence, gives way to a language that echoes the resilience of the Stoics. To adopt Marcus Aurelius's guidance is to go beyond the self-destruction that is present in constant complaining. Stoic tranquility does not mean escaping reality, but rather exploring it deeply, using the tools of acceptance, inner reflection and virtue. By letting go of the habit of complaining, we embrace the journey of personal discovery and transformation, cultivating an inner strength that enables us to face the world with courage and elegance. In today's world, social networks surround us with people complaining about the smallest inconveniences because they love to do so. Don't be like everyone else because no one wants to be like the average. As I said at the beginning of the video, if you're here, it's because you're on the path to becoming better. Every time you face an obstacle, say, Amor Fati, this was made for me. The strong and courageous person you want to become has to go through challenges in life, and accepting them and dealing with them without complaining is what will make you that person. And if you really want to become that person, I've left a link in the first comment that will help you become that person. It's a step-by-step ebook that I created using my experience of Stoic principles. It's in the first comment. Three. Don't talk about being a better man, be one. Epictetus. How many times have you said you'd be better? How many news years, Eve, have you said would be different? Well, I think everyone has. With the increase in social exposure, we are bombarded every day by motivational videos and phrases which aim to inspire us to do the things we should be doing. But is that really the case? 
The problem is that this motivation to be better only lasts for a short time. We talk about what we should do, we plan what we should do, but when it comes to execution, it doesn't happen. Think about it. What if every morning before going to work, we told everyone that we were the best in the office? Would that make us the best employees? Epictetus would say no. He reminds us that talking about being good is not as strong as actually being good. And how can we think about that? In the Rocky Balboa movie, his training scene is only two minutes long, and the final fight is 20 minutes long. We think of this two-minute scene as exciting because it has inspiring background music. It shows him pursuing his desire to be the best and the work and sweat he puts in to make it happen. But in reality, that's not how it works. The quest to be someone better takes time, and it's not always pleasant and motivating with background music. Going back to the example of the movie mentioned, Rocky's training scene, instead of just two minutes, takes months or even years to get him to the final fight and become the champion. Now imagine if he just said he'd be the best, would that really make him the best? Of course not. We live in an age full of online debates and conversations where words often outweigh actions. Epictetus warns us not to fall into the trap of expressing noble intentions without putting them into practice. It's easy to talk about change without actually incorporating it into our daily lives. The Stoics offer us a wise way of thinking about this journey of personal transformation. They encourage us to cultivate essential virtues such as courage, justice, temperance and wisdom. However, following these principles requires more than words. We need to change habits that prevent us from reaching our potential. One such habit we need to keep an eye on is procrastination. We often put off our goals thinking that there will be a better time in the future. The Stoics remind us that time is valuable and limited, and to postpone the pursuit of virtue is to postpone our own growth. Gossip is another harmful practice that Epictetus highlights. Although it is common, it can erode relationships and undermine trust. Being a better person means not only improving yourself, but also contributing to a healthier social environment. Gossip, on the other hand, only brings negativity and harms the community. Stoic philosophy challenges us to overcome bad habits by constantly reflecting on ourselves. The practice of mindfulness, so emphasized by the Stoics, is a valuable tool for meeting these challenges. By being aware of our impulses and behaviors, we become better able to stop destructive habits before they become a serious problem. The Stoics want us to be the protagonists of our lives. They show us that the real magic lies in acting, not just talking. Sometimes we want to impress others by telling them how incredible we are, telling them everything we're going to do and what we're going to achieve. But Epictetus reminds us that being amazing is something that people will see by our actions, not by our words. Epictetus' call to be, rather than just talk, is like a brilliant guide in search of moral goodness. Stoic principles are not just abstract ideas, but a practical guide to transforming our daily lives. By abandoning harmful habits, we make room for authenticity, integrity and fulfillment. In this way, we truly become better people. 4. Don't overdo drinking and eating. Moderation is the key. Musonius Rufus have you ever eaten more than you wanted? Have you ever drunk more than you could handle in one night? Unfortunately, this is more common than it should be. In a world where things happen very quickly, and people are always looking for things that make them feel good immediately, it's common to see some people doing things that can harm themselves, even without realizing it. Musonius Rufus said, Don't overdo it with eating and drinking, moderation is the key. This means that it's important not to overdo it with food and drink, and this isn't just about what we eat, but also about how we live every day. This can also be related to the unbridled consumption of information. Today, we are overexposed to every advertisement, every photo or video of people. And even though we don't realize it, these exposures really mess with our character. That's why discipline is so important to philosophers. Rufus's quote is an important reminder in a world where overdoing it is often seen as a good thing and moderation is put aside. When we talk about overindulging in food and drink, it can affect our bodies and our minds. Our bodies were made to be balanced, and when we overdo it, it can cause problems such as obesity and heart disease. Moderation is not only important for our physical health, but also for keeping our minds balanced. The Stoics, such as Musonius Rufus, knew that controlling what we want and avoiding impulses is important for having inner peace. Eating and drinking too much often happens because we want to feel immediate pleasure without thinking about the long-term consequences. 
Stoicism encourages us to have self-discipline, to say no to things we want now, but which are not good for us in the long term. This prevents self-sabotage and keeps virtue alongside your values. Moderation is not just about food and drink, but also about controlling our emotions and how we relate to others. Sometimes we overdo something to escape from problems, but the Stoics tell us to face challenges with courage and understand our emotions rather than using excesses as a temporary escape. In addition, social moderation is important for having meaningful relationships. If we drink too much, for example, it can damage our health and also affect our relationships with others. Getting drunk can lead to impulsive behavior and words said without thinking, which can damage friendships and relationships. Musonius Rufus reminds us that moderation is not something that imprisons us, but something that frees us. When we control our desires, we become truly free, freeing ourselves from the chains of uncontrolled impulses. This can be seen as that saying, they just offered you the helping hand and you're taking the whole arm. This kind of attitude can hurt the bond with whoever is helping you. Taking pleasure in moderation not only maintains our health and happiness, but also strengthens our ability to deal with difficult emotions and improves the quality of our relationships. Musonius Rufus's wise phrase is like a timeless guide to a balanced and meaningful life. Moderation, taught by the Stoics, is the key to a fulfilling life, where we control our desires and decide our own destiny. When these principles are not cultivated, the habits we adopt are destructive, making us increasingly weak and dangerous to those around us. But if you don't do any of these destructive habits, you'll have a good life, or at least a much better one than with them. And if you stop doing these destructive habits and use the stoic skills of making yourself a priority in the lives of others, you will be more respected and contribute to a better world. Click on the screen and watch the video now.